step overs, flip flaps and turns and spins that seem kind of interesting. Well, they're all just some of the various ways footballers try and lure in defenders with the hopes of making a mockery of their opponent. And some are successful, and some less so. And with defenders becoming stronger, fitter, faster and more skillful themselves, there's perhaps more of a need and willing desire to create a unique skill to help you beat the most intimidating and well-established defenders in the game. So why would you want to learn one of the oldest and most basic skills in football? I mean, surely it can't be that effective in today's game, and if it was, wouldn't players already be using it? Matthews again, giving the game everything he's got. When they're talking about the great game, superb! Right. So the skill I'm referring to is the show and go, or the body faint, brought to the main stage in the early 40s by good old Sir Stanley Matthews. He's a legend in my parts. And on snowy, muddy, and waterlogged pitches around England, Stanley Matthews took on defenders left, right, and center, sometimes twice, using the exact same skill almost every time. And every time, defenders fell for it. But why? And how is this still happening today? Well, let's get into how we perform this skill and maybe we can start to make sense of it. So first up, the approach, or the setup. To get the most out of this skill requires two elements, a change of pace and a change of direction. And first comes the change of pace. And when approaching defender, you'll want to slow the pace of the ball, squaring him up. So if you've got your back to him, figure out a way of turning around to face him. Maybe it's a drop of the shoulder to pivot or a strong arm to create space. Just something to give you time to turn around. Once you're face on, that's when we can move into the next stage. Step two, the temptation. Remember, the defender's job is to win the ball and to stop you from advancing to the goal. So by taking small touches towards him, we're now coming into his space. That's when he's gonna feel the temptation to try and win the ball. But we already know this, and in fact, that's kind of what we're hoping for. Step three, the trap, or the dummy slash feint. So we know we're going to the right, and that's because we've already made our mind up. See, that's the key. Always make your mind up before you're taking on a defender, and it might change depending on how the scenario unfolds, but always have a plan. Okay, plan is to head to the right. So to really sell this, you're gonna to wanna to shift your body weight to the left, leading with the left leg, as that's gonna be our pushing leg to get away. Once you've shifted your weight, that's now the trap set. And with the defender's eyes lighting up, thinking he's read our move, that's when we dig into that left leg, pushing off and springing to the right. And as the defender is committed to the feint and therefore off balance, that's key in this situation, that gives us the opportunity we need to take advantage, giving it a burst of speed, combined with that change of ball direction and into the space we go. All right, let's zoom into this real quick to focus on the footwork. So on the approach, we're taking a bunch of small little touches with the torso upright and light on our toes, traveling towards the cone or defender. To start the process of that feint, we then shift the left arm, the legs and body weight to the left to commit the defender, shifting his balance before loading up the energy on that left leg and springing back to the right using the outside of our right foot to take the ball past the cone. Remembering that the goal is to simply shift the defender's balance to give you that split second you'll need to get away. Things to consider. The distance from the defender when you're attempting this skill, you wanna give yourself the space to perform the move where the defender actually is tempted by the trap. Too close and you're likely to lose the ball, but too far away and you'll just be doing skills for the sake of doing skills. And if you take it to the extreme, well then... <laughs> but sometimes it's the most simple skills that are actually the most effective. And once you've built up that control and your touch on the ball, that's when you can start to add more elaborate skills. But you do need to build up that tolerance for working in tight spaces. And this video right here will help you do that. So go do that. <laughs> 